I'm actually very anti-medical marijuana practice. So here's the difference. Theory on the one hand, um, there are people who have pain to the extent where they are on Oxycontin, which is the hardest uh, opiate out there. And some of them function can function on marijuana. Um, and I think that's medically an appropriate solution for it. What we see, my opinion, is that we see 90, 95% of people who have a card in Michigan are just there just to smoke weed. And they have a doctor, and there's a few doctors who prescribe it out. Um, so, um, but when we get over this other piece, um, we, all, we all know, well, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but one thing I'm really excited about is that there's actually research being done on marijuana. First time ever, and it's being done um, by the FDA, same people who approve any other medic medication, and they are doing it on two of the cannabinoids. THC and CBD, um, and I'll talk a little bit about each of them, but I'll also say this, um, what I tell my staff is that when the results come out, we are either gonna need to become pretty humble about what the outcomes are, because I do think they're gonna find some medical benefits for some pieces, but I'll be much happier with saying, with this diagnosis, you need this much in a dosage for this long, um, and you really should have the oil, or you should have a pill form, um, versus, oh, you got a problem, go smoke up whatever kind of weed you want from whoever you want to, just find someone to grow for you. Um, but CBD and THC, here's the, um, so there's some research that's being done right now, but here's the big thing. Um, CBD, it, uh, we believe that it's gonna have some benefit for several different cases, but here's the big deal. You don't get high from it, there's no altered consciousness from it. So there's nothing about um, CBD that um, from a mood altering side is a concern. So that's why I say CBD Hey, I have absolutely no issue at all with CBD. Um, and as I say that, um, THC, again, I am medical marijuana, marijuana, uh, pro-medical marijuana theory, anti-medical marijuana practice. If they were to take that and they were to actually say, for this that, that disease and diagnosis, you should have this amount of this for this amount of time by a doctor who's actually doing that in a way um, that's prescribed, I'd have no issue with that either. Um, so, okay. yeah. So what's exciting is there's finally research being done and we'll have answers because when they do these type of research, you have answers. Like I said to my staff, we may have to become more humble and say, you know what, this is okay for this, this, and this. Um, but at the end of it all, if it can um, bring some clarity for people, um, I'm all for it. And if it could change a person from being on a uh, coding yeah. pain yeah. to that, right. then you're definitely ahead of the game. I agree. Yeah, so we're still a long ways away. And honestly, I don't know if we're gonna get there as a culture because I think there's just an appetite for um, the legalization of the plant marijuana for people. Um, I don't, I, I think, you know, obviously we have a ballot initiative coming up soon. Uh, I personally hope it doesn't go through, but um, I don't know if it will or not. And, but, but so I think in some ways, all this research we're getting may become really kind of null and void because it may just become flat out legal in a way. <coughs> Chicago, he goes all over the country, and he says, in Colorado, uh, manufacturers and big companies are staying away from it because they, they have legalized marijuana, but the feds have not, so you have to follow the feds rule if they've got the marijuana in their system. Employee-wise. Employee-wise. Sure. They're having here, a problem. You've got a major employee problem. Here's the other thing to consider. An employee can do whatever they want to. There are employees here in Michigan, um, Sparrow Hospital, the whole network. You can't smoke cigarettes and be part of that. Um, I mean, they, they will drug test you, and if you have nicotine in your system, and they tell people about that, you cannot have a job there. So an employer can make whatever kind of ruling they want to with that, um, whether it's uh, legal, not legal, any, any of that kind of stuff. So they, they have absolute right to do that. Um, my father-in-law worked for many years at a construction company, and whenever there was an accident, the first thing they would do after they took care of the immediate medical needs, so they do a drug testing of everyone that's involved. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm not liability issues, all kinds of other stuff, work with comp issues. Well, what Joe's saying is that if, if Michigan legalizes marijuana, mm -hmm. are we going to lose major businesses coming in? Yeah. They will choose another state. Yeah, that's very possible. That they don't have to deal with uh, people being high all the time. Right. No, if I was an um, well, I am an employer, 
Um, I, yeah, and obviously I work in Sudbury's field, so it wouldn't be cool no matter what, what for me. Um, but yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense to me as well. Yeah. Um, so that kind of that piece here on dopamine is kind of a really big piece that will kind of lead us into this idea of addiction and what does it look like for different people. Um, this idea of biopsychosocial is, is really important. There are um, some people who, and, and, well, let me just sit, step back and say, um, there's physical addiction, psychological addiction, both those are there. For many substances, the psychological addiction is much more significant than the physical. Um, now, take someone with an opiate or whatever, and they're going through serious pain, detox, um, you might have a really good argument on why the physical might be, might be more difficult. But for many people, the psychological is, is much more difficult. What do you do when you're stressed out? What do you do when um, you just got in an argument? What do you do when you want to celebrate? Sometimes there's patterns people fall into that are pretty pervasive. Um, so there's this biology piece. Biology, part of that has to do with our genetics, and I don't like it, um, but the reality is it's pretty, become pretty clear um, that there is a certain amount of addiction that has a genetic base to it. So you can look up you know, at your family tree and see how, now, as, I, as you look at um, that component, there's more than just the genetics. So I have pretty strong genetics in my family, but there's two other things that are missing for me to become a, uh, an addict. Uh, I would have to use substances, so uh, amount of use over a period of time. Um, so use, length of time using, and genetics are the three things that kind of all come together to determine how likely it is that I'm gonna have an addiction problem. Genetics meaning what? Family genetics of addiction. But isn't that learned behaviors? Learned behaviors? Um, genetics are not. Genetics happen at the moment of, uh, that's my DNA. Yeah. Um, but, the, but when we look at biopsychosocial, um, then we get into the learning behavior. So you got biology at its base, and it has two big components. This idea of possible genetics, if I have it, if I have high genetics, it's easier for me. If I don't have as high genetics, it takes more work. I can still get there. And then you also have the work of the body when it comes to this idea of tolerance. My dopamine's going down. I need more and more to get the same effect. My biology is changing because of the substance use itself. So that's biology. Psych psychologically um, is this piece of I feel like I need it for whatever reason it is. So I learned um, to use substances growing up in a family. And whenever I'm stressed out, um, I feel like I need to use. Um, both, both sides of my family were, I'm from that generation, mm -hmm. was heavy duty alcohol. Mm -hmm. And for any reason. For any reason. Yeah. Right. And it, um, it was learned behavior. Yes. Well, it was, it was, it was environmental. Biopsychosocial. So we'll get to environment in a second. <laughs> so. There's the biology that started, and as they drink more and more, their bodies adjusted to that alcohol, so they can drink more and more of it. That's, that's biology. Um, psycho psychology, um, they're getting something from it. Their dopamine's getting triggered off, and on top of that, um, it could be, um, so we look at someone who um, has gone through trauma, and they have a lot of anxiety. So instead of feeling normal, they're always really jittery and anxious. Well, when I use substances from there, and I still feel up here, that's a pretty big gap. If I feel normal, I don't have this anxiety I use and I feel really good, that's a strong psychology there. But if I, my life's messy or I grew up and I grew up in an abusive relationship um, or I was neglected <coughs> as a child and I didn't feel safe and I used, that's a bigger gap. So that psychology piece can, can be really strong for people based on what's going on in their life. Then socially would be that learned behavior. Um, what did you learn growing up? What did you learn was normal? Well, it's on both sides, and they would celebrate for any reason at all. So it could be the 19th of August, and we have a, is it 19th today? 20th. 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 Ah, That's it's the 20th. You there you go. I was <laughs> celebrating yesterday. Actually, yesterday was my uh, my son's 13 now, so I gave you wrong wrong info for the bio. I have a 13-year-old as of oh, yesterday. Oh. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so that's the biopsychosocial. So uh, when it comes to this idea of dependence or addiction or whatever word you want to use, it's complicated because we are complicated people. We are not, um, it's, we're not easy to understand and we're, we're, we're not computers that are easy to program. But there is a biological piece, um, a psychological piece, and then a social component to um, addiction. So, so that takes us to um, this idea called the cycle of addiction that we'll talk about for a few minutes. Um, 
because that's when we'll talk about how how do people get caught up and what do we and then we can start talking about what do we do for people once they get caught up um, because we don't necessarily need to get them into another addiction um, we do have to find what do we call pro-social behaviors what we mean by that is positive things to do with your free time we also have to learn to deal with um, if we're looking at this idea of psycho um, the, the bio psychosocial what were some of the reasons why I used why well, I had trauma uh, well maybe we need to do some work on your trauma as well um, so we need to help someone um, learn how to, some coping techniques and how to reprocess some things so there's there's a lot to begin to look at but this idea of the cycle of addiction starts off up here with this concept of pain and uh, Quote one of my favorite movies, The Princess Bride. Uh, <laughs> Life is pain, princess, right? Anyone who tells you something different is selling something. Um, I am a huge believer, and I only say this about one thing, but I'll tell my clients this, my adolescents this, my whatever clients, whoever wants to listen. I'm a really big believer that the um, how successful I'm going to be, or they're going to be, or you're going to be as an individual is going to tie down to one thing. It's going to tie down to how well do we deal with pain. Um, how deal, well do we deal with disappointment? Because we will experience disappointment. Um, we live in a broken world. Things don't go your way or my way on a regular basis. And I know lots of people who have experienced pain, and it has crippled them. They have become bitter people. They have um, struggled, um, and they have, um, and it will go back to what that person did. We will always have plenty of material to be a victim. We will always have plenty of material to be a victim. Um, but being a victim doesn't get us anything. Um, being a victim keeps us stuck. Um, so it always comes back to this piece on deal with pain and how well do we deal with pain. And so one of the first things we have to do with adolescents, we're not going to spend the time today to do this, is about just go through and define what is pain, what is, what is that. Because a lot of times adolescents with pain, they think about like hurting themselves physically, which is part of pain. But we're really talking about um, that and a whole lot more. We're talking about uh, relationships that are broken and, and, and conflict between them and parents. We're talking about being behind in school. We're talking about a sport they used to play. Um, we're talking about um, grief and loss pieces. And some of the pain of this world has nothing to do with choices they've made. Just like some of the pain you experience has nothing to do with choices you've made. It's just the fact that you live, in, live, live with pain. Um, some of the choices, or some of the pain we have in this world is a direct result of your choices and my choices as well. And those are things we really have to begin to just look at and take a look at. But the bottom line is there's pain here. And when it comes to addiction from substances, especially, but addiction in general, um, pain um, pushes people to do something because people don't want to feel pain. So with substances, uh, people end up using drugs and alcohol. And why do people 